But I was just thinking about how diehard those fans are. Like, they will go to great lengths to show their support and great lengths to show their devotion to whatever sports team it is that they're showing up to and supporting. Um, And I wondered, what does it look like for a Christian to be like that? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Finding Jesus, where each week we're talking about ways that we can see the hand of God in everyday life. So last night, um, me and my husband went on a walk around our neighborhood, which is pretty typical for us. We do that just about every night of the week, it seems like these days. It's great. It's a time for us to talk and catch up on our day. But last night, this question was posed about what does it look like to be radical Christians? What does it mean to be a radical follower of Jesus? And I immediately started thinking about diehard fans. Um, Now, we're not huge sports people, I have to be honest. We love watching our kids play sports, but as far as getting into professional sports, it's just not really us. Uh, However, we know some people that are, and we have been to a few professional sports games, and I just immediately started thinking about, um, we went to a Panthers game, and there are people who show up hours before the game, and they're tailgating and having a good time, and wearing all the Panthers gear, and they have the Panthers bumper stickers, and uh, even some of them painting their faces with Panthers attire and when you get into the stadium and the game's going on there's like this roar of life of all these people who absolutely love um, the Carolina Panthers and so I I thought about that and then last year we actually had a new experience we went to a Charlotte FC game so Charlotte has a new football club football as in soccer not as in football the Panthers Um, but we went to a game and it was so much fun now I thought that football crowds were intense until I went to a soccer game Um, and they have this entire zone of fans in this this one area that goes absolutely nuts anytime that a goal is kicked I mean like anytime that Charlotte FC did something great like drinks were flying in the air like plastic cups and you were like being showered and rained on um, by people's drinks which were probably not the best drinks of choice and we probably went home smelling horrible but I was just thinking about how diehard those fans are like they will go to great lengths to show their support and great lengths to show their devotion to whatever sports team it is that they're showing up to and supporting um And I wondered, what does it look like for a Christian to be like that? Um, Now, we live in the South, in the Bible Belt, uh, which the culture in America is changing where being a Christian isn't quite as cool as it used to be. Um, But still, we live in an area that is predominantly Christian. But by Christian, I mean like people go to church on Sundays. And if not on Sundays, they at least go at Easter and at Christmas time and probably Mother's Day and Father's Day to appease their parents. Um, So a lot of people are familiar with churches or they're on the role, the roster at their church. Um, You know, most of them try to live pretty good lives. Uh, They try to avoid the really big sins. They try not to do the things that, um, you know, the world looks at as taboo or sin. And even if they're not involved in church, most likely they've heard the name of Jesus. And if they were filling out a form um, as an application for a job or what, whatever, if there's a block that says religion, most people in our area, I think, would choose Christian. But I'm not just talking about the Christian that checks a box. I'm, I'm actually talking about Christians who are radical, like diehard fans. What does that look like? And actually, I would love it if you would comment below and let me know what does a diehard Christian, what does a radical Christian look like in your mind? Because as my husband and I were talking about it, I I was like, you know, Jesus has really become a part or he has become everything, every part of our day. We wake up earlier to spend time with Jesus. And when our kids wake up, we're encouraging them to spend time with Jesus. And then our jobs are often are centered around sharing the good news of Jesus or ministering to people in the name of Jesus. Um, Even our walks, our talks, what we talk around the kitchen table about is Jesus and what he's doing in our lives. And I just thought that's probably radical to some people. I think that if people were to step into TJ and I's home, they would probably be like, wow, this is, this is pretty extreme. Like this is not just a Sunday morning Jesus thing. This is a Jesus all the time. It's, it's what we talk about. 
it's who we think about. It's what most of our time is devoted to is loving God and loving people and, and making Jesus known. And I was just thinking about what are some of the things that set apart um, radical or diehard fans. And the first thing that came to mind is that they're willing to look a little bit strange. You know, those diehard fans, they don't stand out so much when they're in the stadium, but when they walk into the gas station or the restaurant on their way to the game, they look a little bit crazy when their face is painted half blue or they're wearing the blue fuzzy hat, you know? So you might look a little bit strange if you're radical or you're a diehard fan and you're okay with it because the love and devotion that you have for that thing or that person is worth it. So you're willing to look a little bit strange, and a lot of diehard fans are willing to spend an enormous amount on whatever it is that they're supporting. I I don't even want to know what some of these things cost. Uh, You know, when I think about like the Super Bowl, if your team gets to go to the Super Bowl and you're willing to pay for those tickets, I I mean, I've heard, I don't know because I've never actually researched it, probably tens of thousands of dollars that people spend on tickets to go watch a four-hour game because they're diehard fans and and they are willing to pay that. And it's funny because Jesus actually told us to count the cost. He says in Matthew chapter 16 that if anybody wants to follow me, he has to count the cost and take up their cross, take up their life and be willing to follow him. So being a radical follower of Jesus, there's a cost to it. And if you're a diehard fan, you have to be willing to say it. It doesn't matter what this costs me. I'm, I'm all in, Jesus. I'm, I'm following you. So we have to be willing to, to count the cost and follow Jesus no matter what it costs us, whether that's friends or family or reputation or, or even our possessions when God asks us to be obedient and to give to others. But I find it so reassuring that the same book of the Bible in Matthew, a couple chapters later, Jesus actually makes a promise to his followers. And he says, anybody who gives up those things, anybody who has walked away from home or possessions or even family and relationships, it'll be paid back to them a hundred times. Um, and they'll also inherit eternal life. So it's so worth it. It's worth it for diehard fans, for those that are radical in the kingdom of God. But I think what probably sticks out to me most about diehard fans is that their radicalness, their fanaticism is contagious. We're not huge sports people, but when we go to the games, we we find ourselves getting caught up right in the emotion and the moment of going crazy for these teams, right? We're, we're hollering, we're yelling, and we're screaming until our voices are hoarse because being radical is actually contagious. That's the case when you go to sports events, but it's also the case when you live your life for Jesus, when you surround yourself with other people who are seeking after him and trying to find him in daily life. You start doing that yourself because being radical is contagious. It's worth it, and it's contagious. It'll catch on to your friends and your family. So I I think the one thing that I appreciate about being a diehard fan of Jesus versus a diehard fan of a sports team is that I'm not just a fan. So I think about people who are obsessed with the Panthers or who are obsessed with Charlotte FC or insert whatever sports team or whatever star athlete there. People know all the stats, right? They know all the information. They can tell you who was the quarterback 10 years ago, who's the quarterback now. I don't even know all the positions of football, so I can't say much more than the quarterback. But people know stats, right? They know a lot of information about their favorite sports team. They can tell you, you know, what their standing is, how many wins and how many losses they've had. So they know a lot about those things. And in fact, if they get an opportunity to meet some of those people, I mean, they totally geek out, right? They're, they go crazy because it's like a dream come true that they're finally getting to meet these people that they idolize and they love so much. And the really cool thing about being a diehard fan of Jesus is that we're not just a fan, that we're actually friends. In fact, Jesus said in John chapter 15, he told his disciples, I no longer call you servants. You're more than just servants of mine. I call you friend. So we have a faith where we don't just have to learn about and have a head knowledge of who God is, but we get to know intimately as a friend, as a father, even as a love the God that we serve and that we're so radical for. 
So I hope this has encouraged you this week to choose to be radical, to choose to be different, to not go with the flow and just live a casual Christianity, but to actually be willing to look a little bit strange to the rest of the world around you because God is so deserving of that. So I'd love for you to jump in the comments below and let me know how are you walking out your faith in a radical way this week? How are you being a diehard fan that says, I'm all in, I'm the biggest supporter, and not only am I a fan, but I'm a friend of God. I can't wait to hear from you guys. And if there's anything that we can be praying with you about, please drop that in the comments below as well. And take some time to like and subscribe to the channel and share it with other friends, especially those that you know are looking for Jesus, finding Jesus every day. Thank you.